Now tell me what you think of this incident because this is a tough one. This is a hard one to call. Is anyone at fault? Possibly. Tell me how you saw it because this is splitting opinion. Part of me thinks you almost always have to be like, the guy in front has the line, right? If he cuts across you, you've just got to roll off. Sorry. But you've got to understand when you're riding a motorcycle, when you're turning into a corner and someone's, something's on your outside, and, and this is a point that was made by Alex, you're not looking left. When you ride a bike, if you want to, the best way to get a bike to turn, your bike, the bike follows your eyes, basically. If, if you're looking around the corner, which is what he's doing. You're looking as far around the corner as you can because the bike will follow where you're looking. Like you've got to look at where you're aiming to exit, basically. You don't look at the apex in front of you. That's where you're looking when you're coming out of the last corner, right? You look around at your exit point and even further. So like as you get around the corner, you're looking ahead. And you see that when you watch their heads. It's, hard, it's something that's hard to realize if, if you don't ride. Uh, but that's where you look. And that's the best way to get the bike. The bike follows where you your eyes the bike will follow your eyes right it's the best way to explain it so he they neither of these guys are looking like so there's no like quick like when you're in a car and you can like oh there's a guy on my outside but you same thing in a car you are looking ahead right you watch f1 drive they'll be looking way ahead but you can quickly check and it doesn't really affect where you're turning if you do that while you're on a bike you don't really do that because it can affect where you're aiming so in that sense i do understand alex at no point is ever going to be looking back to his left to see what's coming from that side he's got to either commit to that corner or not by the time a bike gets to about here can you see that in your peripheral vision i don't know it all happens really quickly what i will say is both of them must have known where each other are in the sense that not like i said you're not looking at the other person so you don't know exactly where they are but the way that that corner's played out you know that he's gone wide there for example, Alex has gone wide. So Pekka will know that Alex has gone wide there. So he's taken the line. You know you're in front because you've had the momentum. You know how momentum works. You get a feel for these things. So as you turn in, whilst you know that you might be ahead of him and you're like, I'm going to be the aggressor here. I'm going to take the apex. It's his job to roll out. You do know that he must know there's a chance he's going to be there. So do you leave a bike with just for, for the sake of the championship there? And the fact that you're quicker than him on the circuit, that's why you've caught him. And you've got however many more laps to pass him. Do you just give yourself a bike width there and not make it an issue? I think that would have been the sensible thing to do. Even if you think you're fully past him and he has to concede the corner to you, for the sake of the fucking championship and the fact that you will pass him eventually by the end of the race, even if he holds on for that corner, do you just be sensible and go, I'll leave a bike width on the inside? So whilst I don't think it's, Peko's fault that the collision occurred. I do think it's 50-50 if you ask me. I don't see how any of them can... I guess track position, you have to give it to Peko, but it is a meeting of two in the middle. But this is where I'm like, if you're Peko, championship on the line, you can go into... You've had a bad weekend. You can just take what would have been a third place here, I think, because he's going to pass him eventually. Just by... Even just let him stay ahead of you that corner. Like, who cares? Just give yourself the bike width for the sake of the the what sixteen points you'll is it sixteen points per third that you'll pick up for just being conservative there. Just do it. It's frustrating me a little bit for him because you know there's a chance, even if it's a ten percent chance, that he's still leaving it in there. Also, he's Mark Marcus's brother. You don't get along. He's 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 probably thinking, well, I'm gonna fucking leave it in there. You, if you want to go around me, go around me. But you're not having the apex. You don't know if that's what he's thinking. So for me, it is, I can't, I, I wouldn't feel right punishing either of them. If I had to lay blame, I guess track position, you're ahead. Peko's ahead at the apex. You, I suppose you'd have to say Alex should roll out of that because he knows he's coming across him. You know you've made a mistake and he's going to be slightly ahead of you. It's Now, and then you know if he attacks that apex, he's going to wipe your nose off uh, and then you're going to have contact. So in that sense, it's like, do you have to concede it? Probably. If I had to push, but but I wouldn't feel right punishing either. So for me, I'm leaving it like, as the stewards did. I'm leaving it, and I just let them have their squabble in the media of conference room at the end because like one one will blame the other, and that's it. We're both gonna see it from their perspective. With Alex, no championship on the line. His brother is gonna be a teammate next year. He's probably gonna be a bit feisty with you. I'm just 
So I'm not blaming Petko for the incident, which it was a nasty one, by the way. We can go into that. I'm surprised he didn't get hurt getting trapped under the bike. It was a bit of a, oh, like, look through your fingers type one. So while I, I think you're not, I'm not blaming Pecco for the incident, for the contact, I am blaming him in the sense that it's like, why put yourself in that situation? Like, why have you put yourself there? It doesn't make sense. You've got however many more laps to go past him. You're definitely quicker than him. You've caught him. He's made a mistake. He's probably going to make more mis- mistakes as the tyres wear down. You've got him. Do it, do it at the end of the straight. Like, you can easily give yourself two bike lengths there, even if he holds on to that position. Because you've you've been a bit too conservative with him, you're getting him by the end of the straight probably. Because you've he's going to be out of seat. He's he's all over the place by that point. He's probably not going to have the right line going into the next chicane, which leads you onto the straight. You can sort of keep him on your inside so that he has to defend, and you can do the little cut back thing that you can do. You had him beat. You didn't have to take it on that corner. I'm not blaming Pecco for the contact. I am blaming Pecco for not being smarter. Just give him a bike's width. Give him two. Like, it doesn't matter. You've got him. And that's where I sit on it. While I don't, can't lay blame on the contact, I'm calling it 50-50 or 55-45, which is not enough for a punishment for me. Basically, what I'm saying is I think Pecco's been an idiot there. <laughs> I think Pecco's just been an idiot. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So, yeah, Pecco, what the fuck? <laughs>